The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning. It's Fed Day, folks. We have a decision at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You'll have a press conference at 2.30. Markets this morning, higher territory, actually above any of the highs that we got yesterday, actually above the highs that you're talking about towards the close of action on Monday. Remarkable turnaround from where we were yesterday at about 10 in the morning. You're talking about a low of 42.76. We're 134 points, 134 S&P points. You make it down after the close last night, Microsoft out with their earnings. They're trading higher this morning. Man, they spiked lower last night, though, on the first headline number. That sent futures lower across the board. You had the S&P 500 futures trading at a low of 42.96, just from 445 last night, folks. Remarkable resurgence in the markets. You're talking about higher territory. S&P's up 1.36%. NASDAQ, up 2.07%. Zooming in on the action right near the highs. Now, as I stated, S&Ps were basically, we did peak above actually where you were on the close of action on Monday. NASDAQ 100 bumping right up against that level, 14,431. You were up as high as about 14,500 towards the end of action on Monday. You jump over to the Dow, up 305 points, 34,000. 491 after almost getting a 32,000 handle on Monday. And you get the Russell back above 2000, the Russell trading at 2027. Bitcoin catching a bid, crypto catching a bid. Now, interesting action yesterday. Yeah, you had a little bit of volatility in terms of Bitcoin, but not quite the correlation that you saw on Monday, right? Look at the sell off on Monday. You trade higher. You can't really find as large of a sell off in Bitcoin yesterday when the markets were kind of falling out of bed. So much for the correlation as it varies, and you have Bitcoin, 38,375. You jump over to Ethereum, up 200 bucks at 26. Same thing for Ethereum. Yeah, you did have a sell-off at one point, but nothing like what the market experienced and nothing like what it saw on Monday. Crude, we're talking to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour from forex-trading-unlock.com. Just in the last two days in the crude contract, you're up more than $5 right now from Monday's low. You're above where you were on Sunday, and you just got above where you were on Thursday or Wednesday, putting this on a daily. That's a high, folks. 87.20. We're trading right now at 86.76 in the price of crude. Gold contract this morning. We were higher. We're giving back some of those gains. Gold makes it up to 18.54 yesterday. You're back basically giving up yesterday's action. You're negative $10 to 1842 in gold. Silver is off eight pennies, dropping a bit. Even in the last few minutes, silver is above $24 just recently. You're now trading at 2380. And on Fed Day, we jump to the all important notes and bonds. You're looking at the 10 year right now. Positive by two ticks at 128.06. We have a yield right now just under 1.78% on the 10 year, 1.78%. You check it out on a daily basis. Some pretty remarkable action to kick off the year. You kick off 2022 with price action. I got to find this exactly. There it is. That's the kickoff of the year. 130.13. You trade down more than three full points. And since then, we've bounced more than a point. Remarkable January action for the 10 years. We're sitting at 1.78%. And let's jump over to the VIX. As we round out the morning wrap up, we spike at 38.94. And just like that, we've given up $10 of action on the VIX from that spike. Now, that spike was a couple days ago. Interesting in terms of the accelerations we've had yesterday, you got all the way up to almost 36. That looks like a spike, folks. I mean, that looks like a peak that is made here. You take a look at the spikes we've had on a weekly basis going back to since the pandemic. You see that spike. It's a legitimate spike. It's in the ballpark of the spikes from previous spikes of terms of market sell-offs. Now, it doesn't mean we might have another spike coming down the way, but you can see the action. We make it to as high as 38.94, um, well over any hike, uh, spike, excuse me, since October of 2020 in terms of VIX action as we back off on the VIX down $2.26 so far this morning. All right, let's jump over to Microsoft, man. They kick off the tech earnings. And whew, talk about saving yourself. There's the action on Microsoft last night. 
Let me see what I have. What is this Fibonacci line I got up here? Uh, well, we can just do that away, folks. That gave it all back from October 4th. Remarkable. Let's take that Fibonacci line off there since, I mean, we got Basil Chapman, our man, coming up next, fo next folks. He talks about those cup formations. He talks about symmetry on both sides of the cup formation. If that's not symmetry, folks, what is? You go from October 4th of 280 up to 350. You come down on October. Yep, that's a daily, folks. Uh, that is Monday's action to 276.05. Now, last night, you made it down to 269 after hours. Pretty short-lived. Conference call begins at 5.30. Uh, the stock rebounds. You trade back up to 3.04. We'll get a little bit more into their numbers. Personal computing, a decent beat for them, saving them on the revenue side. Guidance, pretty decent as well. When you talk about cloud, uh, one of the numbers out there, and we'll get into the exact numbers because it's important, but one of the numbers was growing at 32% versus 36, I think. You know, they are graded on quite a high scale when you're talking about the multiples that they earn. Uh, they quite lived up to expectations. And this morning, they're up $16 uh, for Microsoft. Now, they had about a $20 move. So pretty close to in line with the expected move. But, man, it's going to be an interesting open, especially when you get this type of action after hours. Uh, sometimes that stock may have some action one way or the other on the open, but you're going to open about 16 bucks in the positive on Microsoft this morning. Let's jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. As we have the NASDAQ 100 up 285 points, you had Amazon closing out yesterday at about 27.99. And as you see, all the markets accelerated lower initially on that Microsoft news, right? Interesting. Take a look even like Amazon from 2800 down to a low of almost 2500. Conference call begins at 530 and Amazon pops with the whole market popping. We jump over to Apple. Whoops. Yes. Similar option action on Apple as you trade down to almost 157 last night on Apple. You're trading at 163. Folks, that's six dollars. That's about a hundred billion dollars in market cap that Apple just popped since last night. One hundred billion dollars market cap Apple from last night. We jump over to Google shares. Let's check it out. Google catching a pop from 2534. You're trading near 2600 this morning. Tesla shares trading at 956 from 918. All right, let's jump around and see what else we have going on. Jumping to the Fed. So we get a 2 p.m. announcement. We have a 2.30 p.m. press conference. Uh, it's going to be a wild one, folks. The, the interesting thing is that sometimes, even if you knew what the Fed was going to do, I'm not sure we all understand how the market is going to process that, which is pretty interesting to say. Um, in layman's terms, of course, you know, you start getting some severe tightening here. You get anything that indicates that they're going to ramp things up on an accelerated basis. Yeah, the market's going to freak out on that, to put it lightly. Uh, but I don't imagine that's the plan for the Federal Reserve today. They may indicate that, you know, a March rate hike is coming. I don't envision 50 basis points, folks. Uh, we're going to be talking to our man Kevin Hinks coming up next after the break. He is a big fan of Chairman Powell, probably rightfully so, with how he's meandered this pandemic and the stimulus involved. But now comes the delicate moment of pulling that stimulus and uh, rates and so forth out from underneath the market. And I don't envision he wants to shock the market with a 50 basis point cut, folks. And I don't envision that he thinks we're quite there in terms of expectations. I mean, economists still think inflation is gonna subside over the next year. He's not the only one. Keep that in mind when people start talking about surprise 50 basis point cuts. You know, um, hikes, hikes, hikes. I got to start thinking about hikes, right? Uh, we'll talk to Kevin next, but think about that. He is not in the business. And I don't think he needs to yet. Maybe hikes at every meeting. That's a little bit more possible. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 55 points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 291, the Dow up 255, Russell up 24. Markets green across the board. You got Microsoft right now jumping over after their earnings trading up 303 from 288. You see the rebound from 269. Remarkable last night. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network breaking down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trades setups folks trade management rolling defined risk talking options talking earnings talking fed day kevin higgs good morning it's too much tommy i can't do it oh it's never too this. much it's kevin too much. don't kid us let's go where do we start off man it's overload yeah How about <laughs> right this? it's 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 Within remarkable about go three hours of the trading day we're going to get jerome powell speaking and then elon musk speaking so Anyone who enjoys the markets or ha at least has the same sickness that I do, uh, <laughs> they're going to have a fun day. And we're off to a great start so far with the NASDAQ up over 2%. And that's pre-Jerome Powell. So this could be a big day. You know, it's really going to be what Jerome Powell says, right? I mean, we've already had... Look at the, did you look at the overnight trade in Microsoft? It was Oof. incredible, the range that this stock has traded in already. Boeing has had a big move this morning already, even though they came out with charges. So I think this is going to be a pretty, a pretty crazy trading day for everyone. So buckle up and keep your powder dry, Tommy. That's to say the least, man. I Last night, Kevin, when I saw those Microsoft earnings, you know, right out of the gate down to 269, it was down at 275 for a while until that conference call began. Uh, and I said, this is not what the market wanted, man, in terms of the volatility. We have, yeah, uh, Monday's action, 200 points almost in the S&Ps. Tuesday's action, 100 points almost, saves itself. Uh, after the close, the kickoff of tech earnings, the FANG stocks especially. Microsoft, pretty remarkable, over $50 billion in revenue in 90 days, man. They're growing at a you know, even if you're talking about maybe a deceleration was was one of the headlines in Azor. Remarkable growth across the board on that company. And uh, they're trading higher this morning up to 304. So talk about saving itself. I was a little sweating last night, Kevin, just because I said, man, the volatility coming in with Microsoft trading down $20 out of the gate. But they go over the numbers, they go over the forecast and the market likes it. And uh, maybe that's a sign of things to come man, as we come into Fed Day. 
So we all know you guys are going to talk a little bit, I'm sure, about the market action and Mr. Jerome Powell. Uh, but what do you guys have coming up for the segments this afternoon at noon today on Fast Market, Kevin? Well, as you know, uh, yesterday we already looked at Intel. But so today we're definitely, obviously, uh, White Bully is going to talk about Tesla during their segment. So the middle segment will, will be Tesla. We'll surely trade uh, one of the tech stocks, either Lamb Research, and we've got MasterCard. But today we'll really focus on Tesla. That'll be the lion's share. We've got McDonald's out before the open. So uh, a lot of good names to go over today, Tommy. It is pretty cool, Kevin. I got the Thinkorswim platform up here, the Analyze tab. I got the market maker one day expected to move $71 as an options trader. I know you've talked about it many times. We always got new listeners and viewers coming in. For those not familiar, and they're looking at it right now, I got Tesla up here. You're trading at 956 pre-market, but as of the close yesterday, you were at 918. Uh, the Thinkorswim platform has a move up there of, we'll call it $71, 70.999 as they come in. Can you talk just real briefly, Kevin, where that number comes from and basically what it means as a trader? Yeah, when you look at Tesla's trading page on the Thinkorswim platform, right in the middle of that page on the third line from the top, there's three M's and a number. And that number for Tesla today is about $71 plus or minus, which means the implied volatility in the front expiration, currently trading about 139 and a half. The, the very second that it goes over the second expiration, right? That's the February 4th expiration. That creates the market maker move. That's what it does. It's not something you can call up or look at, but when that front expiration goes over the second expiration is when that's triggered. And it shows an event that's happening during this week. That's what it shows, and it shows the expected move in either direction that the implied volatility is calling for, Tommy. And that's what the market maker move is on the Thinkorswim platform. So right now, based on 139.5 implied vol in Tesla, the move is about $71, Tommy. It's so cool, man, because if you're trading options at all, and even if you're trading equities, folks, you know, understanding the volatility that the market is pricing in around an earnings event, especially with everything going on right now, a company like Tesla that we know can be particularly volatile, it's especially interesting, um, important when you're trading options, because that's a lot of premium, Kevin, as we know, you know, if you're selling premium, man, $71 uh, of premium. Not bad when you can get that type of a move. I mean, that gives you leeway. You're talking about if you go either direction, Kevin, $140 in either direction uh, in terms of the price action you give yourself. So with that, I'm going to give you one more question, and it's going to be the money question we all want to know. What are you looking for from Chairman Powell, whether it's an indication? Are we going to get an indication, you think, Kevin, that March is when that meeting comes? I started, my, my take is maybe we get that. The, the 50 basis point conversation is, is, I think, a little too much. That Chairman Powell has no interest surprising the market, and he doesn't need to just yet. But what are you looking for from the chairman this afternoon? I think, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I think Jerome Powell is has never talked about connecting the dots between finishing the taper and raising interest rates. I think during his confirmation hearings, he struck a different tone that he may not strike in these. So I think at the end of the day, you're going to hear Jerome Powell say, interest rates probably need to go higher, but they're going to be lower for longer. And I also think that Jerome Powell's going to say, we're going to be data dependent and we're going to, he's going to be, the, the to summarize, he's going to be less hawkish than he was during his confirmation hearings, Tommy. All we got is our opinions, man, and, and, and that's pretty close to my opinion as well, but we're going to find out today, man, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on that press conference. It's a great day to be here, man. Kim, we appreciate the conversation, the education, as always. We'll be watching uh, the show today, and Tesla right now, trading at 961 bucks on the open. Thanks so much, Kevin. Have a great show, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too. Folks, tune in every day. I'm sure it'll be a good one today with everything they're talking about coming up Fed Day, and you got Tesla earnings. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, folks, you know, Think or Swim, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, they are a sponsor, okay? But you get into this, 
And I would use this platform anyway. I know I'm biased. I put it out there. You can take that for what it's worth. But the information, especially as an options trader, as an active trader, the thinkorswim platform, you can't beat it. Which is why they're keeping this around, no matter what, even on the acquisitions. TD Ameritrade picks them up, they pick them up for the platform. Charles Schwab picks them up, they keep Thinkorswim because uh, they know the asset they have, and I believe it. Tesla, $71, right? So you get into it, you pull up. All right, so Kevin was talking about it. Here's your front month, all right? You want action through the earnings, $71. You want action through Friday, you're talking about a $93 move. Now, as an options trader, folks, if you're looking for volatility on one way or one direction or the other, let's bring this down a little bit. That's a huge move that you need just to recoup your investment as an options trader. The other way you do that is if you don't think it has the move, and this is where our opinions come into everything, okay? And it's figuring out the best strategy possible for your market opinion and bias, all right? Maybe you're the one selling the premium when you're gonna get possibly a $93 move through Friday. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets in positive territory. We get the S&Ps up 61 points right now. That's 1.4 percent. Really remarkable, folks, in terms of, you know, we talked about Monday's action. I pulled out the article on yesterday's program, if you were watching, talking about the times that the market has come back from almost a 5 percent decline. Haven't seen that happen since about 2008 when you had it happen a couple of times. We had it happen eight times between the years of 2000 and 2002 from about august i think it was in 2000 
the next 24 months, you had that go in a period of eight times. You saw the market come back from a greater than 4% decline. I was joking saying, well, what happens if you do it two days in a row? Show me some, some statistics that you do it two days in a row. And we didn't do it two days in a row. But boy, rational markets, these markets, folks, uh, I don't know what to tell you when the market literally does 200 points on Monday, does 100 points on Tuesday, and now we come into Fed Day, which is usually one of the more volatile events of the week, the month, the quarter, could be one of the more volatile events for the year, as Chairman Powell is right on the cusp, at least, of indicating a liftoff on rates. That is usually a period that at least ahead of that period, right, market is forward looking. So it would make sense that the market would get ahead of rates rising, which obviously it has to kick off the year. That's part of what's going on here. Uh, nonetheless, you get the point. Volatility in spades in a big way as we come into some big earnings. Tesla, uh, Microsoft, we'll see how Microsoft jumping over to their open right now, trading higher, up 6% right now, pretty in line with the expected move, about $20 on earnings. But man, yeah, you had quite an opportunity last night in terms of this equity was trading down there. Right out of the gate, you hit 269, but you could call it a fair price of about 273, 274, 273 for the better part of about an hour and a half. Conference call begins at 530, and the volatility 15 minutes later kicks off. And by 615, you're trading at 299.75. I was going to say 300. Let's jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. As we know, they all traded with Microsoft last night. Amazon. Up a decent 2.6% to kick things off. We jump over to Apple shares, up 1.9% to kick things off. Google shares this morning, up 2.4%. We jump over to Boeing. Boeing, I believe they had their numbers, right? Yes, they had their numbers. I got the article up. I wasn't sure if it was just their numbers or, or just uh, revealing information or outlook. Boeing, down 1%. You were a size 210. They were pretty decent numbers when you look at the cash flow side of things. So they had to take a $3.5 billion charge on the 787 Dreamliner, generates positive cash flow for the first time since 2019. Um, they have stopped, pro production problems have stopped Boeing from delivering the 787 Dreamliner for the past 15 months, third consecutive annual loss, 10.30 p.m. Uh, a.m., 10.30, about in an hour, you're gonna have a call with analysts. So look for a little bit of volatility, during our man Basil Chapman's call, uh, program coming up next at 10.30. So the one-time charge skews things here, which is uh, a loss of 7.69 a share. Market was looking for 42 cents. Revenue, they miss 14.79 versus 16.59. Quite a miss indeed. They lost $4.29 billion in the year. Uh, improvement from 2020, I guess, when you lost $12 billion almost. Net loss of 4.16 in the quarter, less than half of the 8.44 billion it lost a year earlier for the quarter. So 4.29 on the year, that's quite a loss. Sales fell 3% from a year ago. Uh, it's a rebuilding year. As you know, Boeing, they're dealing with a couple of woes and a couple different aspects of their business. But uh, the Dreamliner production has driven up costs and the entire debacle has cost it 5.5 billion. And that includes 2 billion in additional costs through next year. It's a big one, man. Now, Boeing, take a look at this thing on a weekly. You were in a trend line out of the depths of the COVID lows at 89 bucks. But, man, you've just been chopping around with 200. Uh, floor and Boeing is about 190 there, maybe. And that is we traded down today alone. No, that's the weekly. Hold on. Yeah. 190 is where this thing's had a couple bounces. Not the action you want out of the gate on Boeing shares. Quite the sell-off. You were just trading to 208, and just like that, we had a 199 handle in the open there. All right, let's jump around. Microsoft real quick. I wanted to go over their numbers. So shares gain on forecast for Azure cloud growth. Second quarter revenue profit, get a boost from Office and Windows. They sold a lot of computers as well in here, folks. Uh, let's see, you get into the numbers. Yeah, how about, I mean, I said to our man Kevin Hicks, $50 billion, folks, in 90 days. That's the first time that they've topped $50 billion in a quarter. Azure revenue, 46%. Staggering growth. Uh, and that's a deceleration, by the way. 46% is a deceleration, which is what caused the flip out last night. Okay. The headline numbers, when it comes out instantly, are missing growth numbers for the cloud segment of their business. That's what sent that stock down to 269. You get into it a little bit more, though, and the forecast is okay, which is what saved it on the conference call. Now, 
there is your declining growth number for Microsoft, okay, 46%. You were up at about 50%. Now, what they do is that is Azure. Total revenue on the quarter climbed 20%, 20%. You're growing at 20% and you're doing $51.7 billion. Staggering growth at those levels, as we all know. Uh, and commercial cloud sales, so that will include Azure, okay, rose 32% to $22.51 billion. Gross margin in that business narrowed slightly to 70%. Gross margins of 70% and you're growing at 32% to $22.1 billion. Now, I started off the program saying, uh, I believe the previous growth on that entire segment, commercial cloud sales was 36%. So that's the, the difference that you get there. We got a caller. Let's jump over to our man, Jose in Lakeland. Jose, good morning. What's happening, man? Yes, good morning, good morning. Hey, just a quick note on the NFL, the, the Tom Brady run. Uh, pretty pretty remarkable, but I heard that the NFL is making all players sign a release form next year if he returns. They'll have to sign a release form in order to hit him. <laughs> uh, come on, we can't all be uh, Brady haters. He gets hit, he got, he got that bloody lip, man, and they didn't even get a call. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, I, I didn't know that, but that might be the first hit that he's taken all year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, quite a career no matter what, man. You can't deny it, uh, but quite an NFL playoffs we got going on no matter what, man. As a fan, you know, I'm a Patriots fan first. I'm a Tom Brady fan for sure. I'm a Bucks fan second. Uh, but, man, I'm a football fan, and this playoffs is, is something else for sure. Jose, what yeah. are we looking at, man? Hey, um, what's your take on, I know interest rates, a half a quarter point, you know, just like Greenspan, incremental L, Greenspan, quarter point, quarter. But what's your opinion on the effect on real estate prices? Boy, uh, you know, the one thing that I keep talking about is that the game has definitely changed. I know you, you know, I hear you, Jose, with some great calls into my dad's show all the time, man. Um, my dad talking about it as well. You know, I don't think a lot of people outside of you know, investors in the market, whether you're in real estate markets, whether you're in financial markets, have seen the fact of the takeover that is going on by Wall Street, you know, in terms of the Black Rocks just securitizing single family homes. So it can have an impact, man, and it will, right? But not to the degree that I think we've seen previously. And that's what, you know, I mean, that supply is just not going to be the same ever again, uh, especially when you have interest rates where they are. And if you're at one, two, three percent, four percent, you know, it's still pretty manageable for Wall Street to keep those on the books and, and never give them up, man. Oh, I got you. I got you. So inventory is going to mean tight because of BlackRock. Oh, for sure. There's no reason. You know, I would never sell them. They securitize them. They push them out to the public. They collect the rent. Jose, man, thank you for calling. Call again, man. Are you in the market for buying day. or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tf that's 727 329 8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now. Giving up some of the gains. We're still above 4,400, trading at 4,401 right now. And just to finish it up, because there's a great call from Jose, man. Great to hear from you. Thank you for calling. Folks, if you're out there, give us a call, 877-927-6648. And just to finish it up real quick, so you talk about the impact that interest rates will have on houses, right? Again, this is just opinion. Who knows what happens? And it's not a crystal ball. But you have to think about the change that has taken place in that market since really 2008. OK, so you're talking about the last 14 years now that that has happened, that Wall Street has taken over the single family market. And it's just going to expand, folks, with interest rates. I mean, we all hear the stories, right, that somebody puts their house up. And yes, it's not as we're as hysteric as it was, hysterical as it was. OK, um, but we all hear the story as in you got to be a cash buyer, right? They get f five bids for cash when it goes live. Uh, again, not at the levels that maybe it was at the peak. We might have some consolidation areas. But point being, even if you start waning on the investor side of it, that is very deep. Uh, home buyers. Maybe they start having a shot. So maybe as interest rates rise a little bit, we don't all hear the stories that you got to be a cash buyer and six bids come in at or above asking price for uh, a house because maybe the investors wane a little bit, but they're not going away, folks, and they will be in there. So interest rates, I don't think, will have as big of an impact. And we're only talking about, you know, yeah, if they spike 5%, if you're talking about uh, a 30-year mortgage at 9%, yes, that will have an impact. But if you're talking about a rise of 1%, 2%, uh, maybe that just allows actually people who are getting a mortgage to start competing in that market, which will allow housing prices to not fall so low if that goes. All right, folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every Wednesday, we talk to Teddy at 40, 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex trading dash on lock.com teddy kegstat it's fed day good morning it's fr it's freezing fed day in chicago it's minus five degrees here <laughs> minus five uh and, and and what do you guys got like a 25 mile an hour wind out there for a, a, yeah. a feels like feels like temperature uh, negative 35 right yeah we have a wind chill warning until like noon one o'clock today so yeah stay it's cold. warm man <laughs> i tell you you know i know we're spoiled in florida man that's why i live here on monday teddy though i woke up and uh, it was 34 degrees in Florida, and my car, driving the kids to school for the first time, it, uh, was covered in ice. And I had to sit wow. there and explain how most people across the country, as we sat there in the car for five <laughs> minutes, uh, have to warm up their cars because I didn't have an ice chipper in my car. I know, you know, and the, <laughs> I was just covered, man. So anyway, uh, but we're back to like 50. But stay warm because that's a different kind of cold up there once you get below, as we all know. So speaking of cold, speaking of hot, we got some hot markets, man. We got a hot oil market market where do you want to kick things off well let's talk about the oil market so we, yeah. we're coming off a nice little uh, higher move low from a couple sessions ago and we're right Oof. below that that high that we made uh what was it last week so i think we're gonna you know pierce it higher now are we gonna accelerate in a big way 
I think we're going to keep the trend going. I can't, I, you know that $100 has been a target of mine. You know, I still think we're going to go way beyond that over the course of the next year, year and a half, especially with the geopolitical things that are going on right now. I mean, I can't see how it wouldn't. You know, I mean, the reality is United uh, States oil supplies now are at the lowest levels they've been in decades. You know, so we're this is not a good thing whatsoever. Sure. You know, so unless consumption and demand starts to really significantly drop in this country, which would mean we'd have to have lockdowns, which wouldn't be good for anyone. Um, I can't see how uh, the oil doesn't go much higher, you know. So and it's definitely gonna, you can see that, we, you know, we've been talking now for weeks about the divergence in the currency markets. The dollar index obviously has been pressing higher for the past couple dates, especially since we talked last week, you know, but it's a mixed bag of goods, you know, it's it depends on which currency you're looking at. So um, I'm bullish on oil. I can't see anything right now in the forecast. I mean, uh, what, do you, what think, do you think that Putin all of a sudden is going to turn on the pipes and start uh, supplying the world with more oil to help suppress the price of oil right now? I don't think that's happening, you know. So yeah. the OPEC, OPEC can do everything that they want. If you let's say OPEC came out today and said we're going to try and just really, really help the world out and blah blah blah, which we know they they would never do that anyhow. But let's say that they did. Um, that would not make put a dent into the world supply right now. It just wouldn't, you know. Especially with as far as how the supply chains are going as well to move the oil, you know. So. The conditions are totally ripe. We have also the Fed, um, which is now coming into play. You know, uh, is is Powell going to do anything today? Eh, I think odds are pretty pretty minimal that they're going to do something today. I think it's going to be more Fed speak. I mean, you got to realize that they're still trying to make America believe that inflation's only running at seven percent. You know, so <laughs> you know if and you go with if you go with their narrative, then there's no reason to press rates too quickly. For one. Um, that's just the way I see it. Now, we know that Goldman and some other forecasters are now saying there'll be upwards of seven, eight hikes, you know, over the course of the next year or two. Well, obviously, we're at the bottom. So the only way we can go is up, you know, right now, you know. And as far as the way we're dealing with things and, it's, and the way it looks like they're going to deal with it, it's going to be a slow progression. You know, we don't have a Volcker Fed chairman, you know, who would be willing, let alone yeah. have, have the foresight to say, hey, you know, um, this – you know, when you're when you're looking at trying to just when you have an overheating economy or something like that, when you're just, when you're only using rates in a quarter point basis to kind of cur curtail things, whether it's rising or cutting rates, that's one thing. But we're in a situation where we've been at the bottom for a long time, relatively speaking, for interest rates. Even if we were to have a two point raise over the course of the next year, that would still have us at relatively historically low rates. You know, so I mean, as far as the the fantasy that you know, all of a sudden the sky is going to cl collapse, you know, because rates go up. Well, it's not going to happen just because we go up one or two percent. And the Fed is by no means going to raise it five, six percent over the next year or two, you know, to shock the markets. That I don't know if you were listening to the segment before you came on. But we had a great call, Jose from Lakeland. And you're just talking about mm -hmm. interest rates, and it's kind of what I was talking about in terms of like I don't see a huge impact. If it's 1%, 2%, we're at such a low level, you know, you're still going to have, maybe you have the retail mortgage uh, applicator, maybe, you know, if yields are going higher, maybe investors aren't. Either way, the point mm -hmm. was, you know, it's not a substantial change to the market when you're at such low interest rates. Yeah, if interest rates go up to 9% right. and the 30-year mortgage is 10%, sure. of course, that's going to hurt housing prices, but not where we are. Right. And I'll say to... Just agree, man, in terms of the surprise nature of all these, you know, maybe people are talking about a 50 basis point. It's not just Chairman Powell, Teddy, and whether you agree or not, most analysts are saying, you know, and I know you say going with the hikes, but that, that all of this is going to wane in the next year. So if most people are saying it on Wall Street, why is he going to freak everybody out with a 50 basis point right. cut? Um, right. I mean, hike. I have to get hike. hike in my head now. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know. Um, so, so I kind of agree, you know, and, and that doesn't mean, though, that things don't change in the next three, sure. six, nine months. Because I think if it sure. becomes undeniable to the point that if we go, we're now at the point, you can't go three years post pandemic, I think. You know what I mean in terms mm -hmm. of the next year? Because everything was, we've now overcome, over Omicron peak it looks like, uh, and hopefully life resumes. I don't see the chance for those shutdowns. So if everything's supposed to calm down in the next year and it doesn't, then you know I think we might be in for a little bit of an accelerated aspect of that. I tell you what, can you hang with us, Teddy, for the break? Sure. 
Okay, yeah. we're gonna go to a break, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more of the actual uh, some of those forex pairings. Sure. We got the S and P's. We're up 66 points right now, trading up 1.5 percent at 44.14. We uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Teddy. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad from forex-trading-unlock.com. Uh, so, Teddy, we had the dollar index up a little bit pre-market. It's pulled back a bit. I have a chart of the dollar yen up here. We have some positive action. We're up to 114.34. Uh, I know a lot of our listeners love tracking that yen, especially uh, dollar yen with the gold action. Um, what do you think of this action today even or, or as we base it around 114 right now down from 116 to start the year in the end? Oh, I love it. You know what? It's, it's kind of funny because it's Fed Day. The interest rate markets is pretty dead. Um, I would expect most of the markets to be dead except for those that are obviously because of earning releases in the stock market. Sure. Uh, but most of the currencies, I don't think you're going to see very much movement in today. You'll see a little bit, but uh, the U.S. dollar yen absolutely is the one mover that we got going on today. Uh, it's been firm for most of the morning. Um, as we're talking right now, I think, yeah, it's making new highs right sure now. Is. Yeah. So and and the nice thing is we're coming off of a new low that was set a couple days ago. Now it, it we 
I am viewing this as a correction that we're viewing right now. And now we are at the beginning of a turn back to the upside. Um, when you look at, um, besides the global tensions, the oil we just spoke about, and also the interest rate factor with the Fed, I can't see how you wouldn't see the U.S. dollar yen rebound up towards the highs that we were looking at just a couple weeks ago. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm bullish. I've been bullish for a long time. So it's not just a personal thing. It's a technical, fundamental thing. I think you're going to see a lot of potential movement there. And there's also a couple other indicators where you can see this. You know, um, if, I always say the market is the best indicator for the markets, especially in real time. So if you compare, like, for instance, like the Australian dollar right now is up versus the dollar today. OK, the U.S. dollar yen, the, the, excuse me, the yen is the one that's down. But the Australian dollar yen cross is actually looking for a sell signal right now. You know, so that shows that there is a lot of divergence once again that I'm talking about. And you shouldn't see this kind of trade setup going on because um, Australian dollar right now, obviously, with the lockdowns, we all know that things are much more severe and restrictive down there. It made a lower, it made a nice little bounce, you know, but as you can see, like the New Zealand dollar really is starting to, to wane. So if that part of the world continues to weigh heavily in the bears, I think you're going to see a lot of bulls hit the end for sure. All right, man, it's going to be up. We got market straight and higher right into this. We're up 75 points in the S&P. Teddy, I can't wait to find out where we are a week from today, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. 122 in the end. Let's see it. I love it. We'll find out 122. Stay tuned, folks. Uh